My name is David Shopland and I am a theatre creative. Uh, I call myself that because throughout my career I have been a writer, a producer, a performer, a director, a designer. I've made posters, I've written budgets, I've done pretty much everything in and around theatre. So rather than having a very long title, I just go by theatre creative. Theatre has been a big part of my life for as long as I can remember. I have quite theatrical roots going back to before I was born. My earliest memory of theatre is rather embarrassingly of being about four years old uh, directing my parents and my older sister and her boyfriend at the time in productions of Grease, The Addams Family, uh, The Jungle Book, uh, a very embarrassing photo somewhere of my dad dressed as Shere Khan and embarrassing videotapes of me directing and being very angry when they wouldn't take the Grease dance sequences seriously when I was trying to choreograph them at four years old in our living room. So uh, it's always been there and obviously always, always something I've taken very seriously. But I don't really think I started seriously thinking about it as a career until I got to secondary school. When I was in year nine, this was my first exposure to drama or theatre studies as it was called in my school as a lesson. And it was here that I met my very inspirational drama teacher, Dave Langley. He is still the head of drama at the school I went to. It's a place called Prior Park College in the city of Bath, southwest of England. And Dave Langley was the first person that really opened my eyes to having a career in theatre and having that passion. And I think that's something really important in teachers and I would encourage anyone watching this to go to their teachers and have those conversations about what it is they want to do because there are teachers out there that are just brilliant at seeing that spark and recognising that spark of interest in a student before maybe even they've realised it themselves and that was certainly something that happened to me. When I found drama everything fell into place. I was okay academically in year seven, year eight and going into year nine but no subject had really fueled my fire yet until I found the theatre department and my last years of school towards the end of GCSEs you could find me most afternoons in the theatre whenever I wasn't in a class I was working on a production not just performing but backstage as well helping direct learning what all the different lights were and what all the terminology meant immersing myself in that world of theatre. Interestingly, I was uh, lucky enough, privileged enough to go to uh, an independent school, a private school. It was paid for by a charity called the Royal Pinner Foundation. And because of that, they only funded you up until the age of 16. Back then, when I went to school, that was the legal age that you had to be in school by. It's now obviously 18. But back then, you could leave school at 16 and not have to stay in formal education. So therefore, I didn't have any funding to continue. My parents, unfortunately, didn't have the economic means to let me allow me to continue into A-level. And I therefore had to go to the city of Bath College, which was a comprehensive further education college or what some people might call a technical college. And it was here that I did a BTEC in performing arts and national diploma, which suddenly meant that I had gone from doing drama a couple of hours a week as part of 10 different lessons I was doing for my GCSEs to eight hours a day, five days a week doing nothing but theatre. And this is again where I really found my calling as being a all-inclusive theatre maker. I still at this point thought I was going to be an actor. I always thought I was going to be a performer first that enjoyed those other aspects. When I was at college doing my BTEC, I got the opportunity to direct, I got the opportunity to write, I got the opportunity to learn about the business side of theatre and producing and all these different elements of how you make a theatre company, how you make a show, way the way back when I was 16. And that spurred me on when I finished that BTEC to try and get into drama school. And I did my first round of drama school auditions when I was 18, just finishing my second year on the BTEC. And I very quickly realized I was not ready. And I think that's something really important that uh, I hope a lot of people are getting better at recognizing and realizing is you do not have to go to university, drama school, a higher education establishment straight away. I really am a proponent of gap years. I believe having that little bit of life experience out in the real world before going back into education is a really rounding and grounding experience, uh, not just for someone going into the creative arts, but just in life in general. So 
after pretty big failures of the three drama schools I auditioned for, realizing I was out of my depth, I wasn't ready, I needed that life experience. I spent two years out of education and I immersed myself in the local community theatre world of Bath, where I grew up. And that was a further theatrical education, albeit not a formal one, because I was in and around the amateur dramatic scene and I am a huge supporter of amateur dramatics because I think, especially for young people, it is where you can really cut your teeth in the world of theatre, being inside a working theatre, understanding how a rehearsal works, getting the opportunity, as I did at the age of 19, to direct my first production in an 120-seat theatre in Bath with eight actors and a working bar on set and all these amazing things that were afforded to me by the local amateur dramatic scene. And it meant that when I was finally ready to audition again to go to drama school in 2008, I had all of this experience behind me from my relationship with amateur dramatics and with community theatre locally. And I did apply again in 2008 and I ended up going to Rose Bruford School of Theatre and Performance on their American Theatre Arts course. I had actually applied for 10 drama schools at this point in that year alone and Rose Bruford and the ATA course, as we would call it, was my top choice and it was my very first audition. I fell in love with the location, I resonated so strongly with the teachers and the ethos and the philosophy of the course that I immediately went home and cancelled all my other auditions because I knew that this was the place for me. It also gave me a lot of life experience because for my entire second year I studied in a small town in Texas called Nacogdoches. It was a town of 30,000 people and it was one of the best experiences of my life because it was like spending a year on another planet. The frames of references culturally, historically, uh, creatively are so different to how I'd grown up in the UK. It opened my eyes so much and opened my mind to lots of different ways of working and it expanded my friendships, people I've met there who are now friends for life across the other side of the pond, which has been a really lovely experience. And I would really recommend, even if it's not part of a degree that you might do, find some time to travel, because travel will inform your art. Being made aware and working with different cultures will inform your art and inform your theatrical creative practice almost more than anything else can do. That year in America is one of the biggest life-changing experiences for me and it is something that still informs my work to this day, especially if I'm working on plays that might be set in America or written by American authors. I have real-world first-hand experience of living in American culture and that is so important when I'm approaching a project that might be set there as well. Ever since I met Dave Langley at Pryor Park, in the back of my head, I think I've always known really what it is that I wanna do, and that is have my own theater, run my own space. As the years have gone on, as I've gained more experience in the industry, that has solidified now into a desire to one day have specifically my own 100, 200 seat fringe theater Ideally above a pub, I think pub theatres are producing the most interesting, innovative, experimental work on the theatre scene in this country, and to run one myself has always been my ultimate goal. Now, if you go out and work in venues and theatres, especially smaller theatres, you will see they have a lot of various different programmes, and most theatres have a community and outreach programme where they'll engage with young people. I have always had that vision, that singular vision of gaining those different levels of experience, whether that's producing and creating budgets, whether that's directing an artistic experience, whether it's youth and outreach and working with young people to bring that experience in, all of those different spheres of knowledge will all one day solidify when I am able to have my own space, which is the ultimate goal, I guess. And this is where I find myself today, post pandemic, which has been difficult for a lot of us, when the first lockdown was announced in March of 2020. I sat down and I said to myself, 
do not let this affect you. Use this time positively and create, create, create. So whilst I was locked away, I was writing, I was still producing, getting things ready for when the world was going to open back up. And because I put that work in during that time, it meant that I opened the old Red Lion Theatre, one of the oldest and most prestigious venues in not just London, but the whole of the UK, after 425 days of that theatre being closed. And for me, that's one of my biggest achievements, is to be part of that story, part of the history now of that venue. The show was called Saving Britney, and it is a show all about the conservatorship battle of Britney Spears, but also what it's like to be a young person growing up in the late 90s and early noughties, and the idea of fandom and how being a fan can be both a help or a hindrance on your life and the symbiotic relationship between celebrity and fan. And not only did we reopen a venue like the Old Red Lion Theatre, it has been my most successful show in terms of being nominated for two Off West End Offy Awards, which are the largest award that you can be nominated for in the fringe theatre scene. It had sold out audiences for nearly three quarters of its run. And in over a decade of producing professional work, it received my first five star review for a show I've ever directed or written or been involved with. In fact, it had two. So having that pandemic as difficult as it's been on so many of us gave me the opportunity to reset, to focus, to drive myself into Saving Britney and the fruits of that labour really paid off. And now I'm just excited to see where the show's going to go next and where my career is going to go next. I think you need tenacity to be able to hold on in an industry that's incredibly tough and competitive. And I also think you need kindness so that we can make this industry a fairer, more inclusive and more equitable space. I believe you should go and work in your local community theatre, your amateur dramatic society, embed yourself in the local grassroots theatre happening in your area before you head off into the world of training and professional theatre. So I believe if you are out there looking at A-levels, you want to look at drama, you want to look at theatre studies, obviously English, but also things like business studies to help you producing, maths to help create budgets, and also do look at doing a BTEC in performing arts if you really are all consumed by theatre and that's all you want to do go and do a national diploma in that subject. So the income question is very wide ranging and it can be very broad. Uh, when you're first starting out, you'll be doing a lot of profit share shows, which are useful as new creatives, as long as you make sure that everything is absolutely open book and everyone, regardless if you're the maker, the producer, the performer, anyone involved, are all getting a fair and equal share of the profits or you'll be paid an equity minimum rate, which varies, and you can check out all those rates on Equity's website. So I always say go and volunteer and gain work experience locally. Uh, professional theatre companies, arts venues that are near you, go and volunteer doing front of housework, volunteer or work experience in their marketing departments, their literary departments, gain as much experience as you can about being inside a venue and those relationships will hold you in really good stead later on. So the long-term career prospects in this industry, especially with directing, writing, producing, are pretty good in terms of you often hit your stride in the, those industries quite later on in life. For example, Rufus Norris of the National Theatre didn't make uh, anywhere over £10,000 a year from directing until he was in his 40s. So you're hitting that stride later on, so you've got plenty of time, which I find quite relaxing and quite freeing. This can lead to any kind of artistic direction work. It can lead to running your own company. It can lead to uh, working in a venue in a various different matters, whether that's in the marketing department, whether that's in the programming department, whether that is working with new writers, but it could also lead to working in events management. It can lead to working in all various sectors of 
live arts, performance, creative arts, in an art gallery, in a museum, anywhere that needs a figure that is able to make things happen, then you'll be good with directing, producing, writing. This career offers a certain amount of freedom in terms of a lot of jobs will be flexible and you'll be able to do other things around it, certainly starting out. In terms of your whole life, it is not particularly uh, freeing because you will be all consumed by theatre if you're anything like me and the people that go into this industry. It is because you love it more than anything else. So don't expect to spend much time not thinking about theatre if you're in this industry. For training, you can go to UCAS, obviously, and fill out their forms if you are heading off to higher education and do the research around universities and drama schools through there. Also check out federationofdramaschools.co.uk. And if you have any socioeconomic barriers to auditioning for drama schools and the expense of that, check out a great charity called www.opendoor.org.uk, which have been designed to help break down those barriers when applying to drama schools. For directing, check out the Young Vic Genesis Directors Network at directorsprogram.youngvic.org and the JMK Trust at www.jmktrust.org. They both provide awards, guidance and development opportunities. For producing, have a look at Stage 1, which is at stage1.uk.com, which help place young producers with bigger commercial companies. And for more research and reading around what it means to be a producer, go to www.producerbook.co.uk, which is the companion website of a great book that was released 10 years ago by James Seabright called So You Want to Be a Theatre Producer, that will tell you everything you need to know about producing for the stage. And finally, for writing, if you are looking for writing opportunities, where those are all collated best is at londonplaywrightsblog.com. Not just London, but opportunities from all over the world are collated on there every single day, so do check that out. I think if there's one piece of advice that I could leave you with, it was a piece of advice that was given to me a few years ago that really made me see my career path in a very different light and relaxed me on that journey of my career to no end. And that is, as simple as it sounds, a career is only a career in retrospect. You do not know what your career is moving forward. The only time you can call your career your career is at the very end of your life when you look back over what you've done and you go, I guess that was my career. But you can't guess what your career is going to be. You just take an opportunity and that leads to another opportunity. And at the end of your life, that has made up what your career is. So whenever you're being stressed about not being in a place where you think you might be or a path that you've gone down doesn't seem like the one you thought you were going to go down years ago, just remember that, that a career is only a career in retrospect. So there is no rules about what your career could look like, about what you should do. It's why I've started calling myself a theatre creative, because I realised I don't have to pigeonhole myself. I don't have to say, I'm a director, I'm a writer, I'm a producer. I can say I'm all of those things and I enjoy aspects of all of them simultaneously. Much like I don't have to be annoyed that I'm now 15 years into the five year plan I wrote for myself when I was 18 and I'm just getting to about year four of that five year plan now, a decade and a half later, because a career is only a career in retrospect. And if I can leave you with one thing, that would be it.